Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I am talking with two people that started a business, a gallery, a vintage resale shop, and they do it all out of a 1920s, I believe, schoolhouse. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to them is, first of all, because I love meeting people, and I really enjoy the fact that they're taking this old schoolhouse, and their main sort of purpose is for street art and for trying to uh, just really reach out to communities and teach classes there, and they sell spray paint and things like that. I found that fascinating. The other reason is because this particular schoolhouse back in the 1990s, me, my drummer in my band, and a friend of ours actually ran this place as a recording studio for a year. Uh, we used to, <laughs> we, I talk a little bit about that, but I have a soft spot in my heart for this particular schoolhouse, and I've kept in contact with the people who bought it after us. Uh, it was, it's just a neat little place, and I spent a lot of time there uh, in it's it was a it was a neat moment in my life. I don't know why I keep saying neat like I'm like I'm a teacher, like I'm some sort of grade school teacher. It was nifty, but uh, it was it was a great place. It's a four. It's like the kind of schoolhouse you would see on Little House in the Prairie, where it was separated into four rooms and all the classes were of all different ages, or at least that was what I was told the history behind it was. But it's a great place. It's out by the airport, out in the field between uh, Sun Prairie and the airport, the Madison airport. So I was really excited to talk to them and to find out what they're doing with the place. It is a fun interview. They are a a, a nice, crazy bunch uh, of people running this place. So we have a really fun conversation. So here it is, my interview with Pumpkin Hollow Art Gallery, starting right now. Marla Hollow. Uh, I'm the owner and um, I uh, professionally sling spray paint for a living um, to degenerates and artists, but mostly degenerates. <laughs> Let's not call our customers degenerates. <laughs> it's a, it's a compliment. Um, and I'm Valerie Wallace. I'm the vice president of operations, operations manager. I do all the tedious, non-artistic stuff around here. Okay. She makes sure the IRS doesn't come after Right. Yeah, somebody yep. has to pay the taxes. I know. I know yeah. that goes. Yeah. Um, so first of all, are you both from Madison? Where are you guys from? Yeah, I'm from Madison. Okay. Born in Columbus. Lived you, here. All right. Oh, oh. Um, I, I'm from New York originally. Okay. Um, I, I was uh, born outside of Queens, kind of like on the border of Queens and Long Island, right there. So, really? Yeah. And when yeah. did you when did you come here? Uh, seven years ago. Um, Why? I've uh, <laughs> I kind of landed here. I, I landed here basically. Like, um, I left New York in my twenties because I was like, "Yo, fuck this bullshit! It's too expensive." Bye. Yeah. And I went to Colorado, and I actually had another street art gallery in Colorado. Um, Cause I used to, I used to sell like art on the streets and like just do all sorts of wacky shit. Like we would just like go into like dumpsters and like, like pull out like garbage and then like make like art out of it and then go and sell it to the yuppies that threw it away in the first place. Yeah. And then like a bunch of us congregated together cause we were all selling artwork on the streets. Right. And like, and, and then we rented this house. So then we put all of our artwork in the house and we would throw like big parties and stuff. And it was great. It was so awesome. Yeah. Um, and then, um, yeah, lived there for a bunch of years, uh, you know, did like the normal, like, like fucking like arc of fucking life thing where it was like, oh, I settled down and got married and hey, that didn't really work out too great. So, you know, but I got two kids now and they're pretty dope. Okay. Um, How old are the kids? A, uh, I have a 13 year old boy and I have a nine year old girl. And gotcha. Okay. Actually. Uh, my son works in the shop with us. He grew up nice. um, on, on the graffiti walls and all around the graffiti stuff. Um, and, of course, so did my daughter. Um, 
but yeah, uh, when we went to get a divorce, my ex-husband had family that lived out here. And he was like, okay, well, uh, I want to go to Wisconsin because I have my family. And I was like, well, I don't have anyone. I don't need anyone. So let's fucking <laughs> call me. Right. And so we got divorced and fucking I got the kids because, you know, it's whatever. It's great. You know, I'd rather have them. But uh, Wisconsin is dope. Like this You think so? Really great. Oh, yeah. I okay. love it here. It's I've been incredible. here my whole life. So I'm always just like, why did you come here? There are so many more fascinating places to go. Uh, no, bro, this place is the shit. You okay. can do whatever you want. And like, I mean, uh, it's, I mean, <laughs> I, I, like. That's cool. It, 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 it is a good place. It is. Like, yeah. I, I didn't realize that until I moved away. I moved to the East Coast for a while and then I lived in Florida for eight years. Oh, why'd you go But there? after living in Florida, I have decided that. I hated Florida and I came back and I love Madison. Well, so. yeah, Florida. I mean, Florida's like, that, that's a, that's a touristy place. Like that's, uh, that's hard to go. Like I live here. It's more like I stayed here, you know, or I had a <laughs> lot of drugs here. <laughs> <laughs> that turns into Florida. Yes, man, here. <laughs> exactly. Why did, why did you even go to the East coast? Like what was the reasoning behind that? Uh, I've always wanted to leave Madison. Like okay. it was, you know, my hometown. Yeah, same here. Basically, I was in the military in 2003 in the army, okay. and I got injured. Um, I basically turned into a major back injury, and I was bedridden since 2006. So in 2020, I had back surgery. I've had a whole bunch of hip injections and was basically able to work again, but Marla kind of made it, so she put like a, a bed in my office and oh. just gave me the flexibility that I needed. Yeah. And, you know, when I met her, she was trying to get this business off the ground, but she didn't have the business end of the know-how. And, you know, I've got an associates in marketing and real estate, a an undergrad in accounting and a master's in, in accounting. Okay. Uh, I, I found a way to just kind of focus on my education. And I thought that would be able to get me a job, even if I was, you know, working from home. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't pan out that way. So it just so happens that I'm meant to be at this place. Every skill that I have, it's like I was, you know, preparing for this job and all of my life skills, everything. It's just, it is so, um, it's just so fulfilling to work here. Well, and the, the description of it, you're right. It, it works together, but then the two different sides of the coin that you guys are both on one being more the business type and the other one being the wants to run a shop type. How did those come together? Like, how did you guys meet? How did you, how do you know each other? Um, her fiance is one of my best friends in the world. And uh. um, like, cause we used to like, before this was like a store, there was another store too. It was called Momentum. Yeah. Over on and Cottage Grove Road. Yeah. On Cottage Grove I remember Road. when that and opened and it was, everybody was all upset and they're like, people are just going to start graffitiing the whole neighborhood. <laughs> I actually grew up in that neighborhood and I was like, shut up everybody. You know, shut like up. it's not shut that great of a neighborhood. Did, but it's, it looked good. Yeah. Yeah. No, so um, I started I started working at Momentum and um, basically went from being um, like a helper to part time to full time to manager. And then I became the owner because okay. I was like, fuck this, homie, let's go run it. And, and then, who was running Momentum at the time while you were doing um, that? It was a man named James, um, but he wanted to go focus on his family. And so he basically p passed the reins to me. Okay. And um, the original Momentum is um, in Chicago and it's run by Teal One, mm -hmm. um, who's who's a very good friend and huge supporter of our movement out here. Um, and so when I came into the position where I started running it, like it was just kind of like one of these moments where it was like, Shh, what do I do, man? Right. Like, I've never had this much responsibility in my life, you know? So, yeah. you know, I'm good at like, you know, I, I can like, drink and talk to people <laughs> she's you know? a great all she's qualifications great person okay like i i can do that i can do that and i can i can do art you know and um i'm terrible at cooking um but you know like no and that's just, not anything that's needed to sell things okay yeah i, I don't know I, I guess i'm just listing my this salesperson this doesn't seem like whatever. they can make dinner <laughs> no exactly like no like you know i can like put lights on things make yeah. things look pretty but like Fuck me running, homie. Like, I don't know a goddamn thing about POS system. Shit. Like, at our right. old store, we had an iPad and then, like, our cash drawer. Like, we got robbed so many times. Our cash drawer was literally a wad of cash that we would at keep the Cottage in our Grove pocket. Road store? And, yeah. And then really? we would pass the wad of cash to each other when we were fucking, like, when we had to, like, you know, pay, like, we did, like, so, all right. This makes me So, cringe. all right, yeah. And, and, like, I mean, for fuck's sakes, like, what are taxes? I don't know. So, like, it's, like, so crazy awesome. 
because like Val's so legit that she's like, oh no, we need this and that and the other thing. And I'm like, the yeah. what now? I don't know. <laughs> right. like, the thing with the thing. <laughs> right. you know? Yeah, so she basically broke down one day and was like, you know, I couldn't do it. I was like, this is too fucking much, man. And I called, right. I called in my friends, my well, best friends, and I was like, we got to figure this out. So Elmo contacted me and said, I have your life mission for you. You're meant to be here. Okay. And he he's magic. I know you're probably going to ask me more about that later, but let's just, let's just leave it at that for now. Okay. Um, he, I mean, I was struggling with depression in bed. You know, I used to be a workaholic years ago and just dealing with, you know, finding a purpose in life as you get older, it's less about money and more about like your legacy, yeah. like helping people. And so he brought me in here and I sat down with her and I knew she needed a website made. So I offered to make the website. And then as I was making the website, I was asking her things like, you know, what's your tax ID number? And she'd just be like, my what now? Yeah. And it became apparent that she just completely needed somebody to take it on. Okay. And, you know, she couldn't really pay them right away. And I was like, look, I make disability, but, you know, I, I can go ahead and just do this for now. And, uh, basically went between may and september 7th is when we opened and okay. i've just i mean i worked like 300 hours in august and but the nice thing is i can do it when i want it i can do what i need to do and you know i i love that about her she's like you know i say that she's a wind beneath my wings because nice. she doesn't nitpick me she goes oh you need money for something okay i trust you go do it right and, you know, I run things past her. I say, you know, is it okay if we do this, blah, blah, blah. But then she just lets me run with it. And there's no micromanaging. And, you know, this is the job I've always wanted. That's yeah. always frustrating when you have to go through somebody and convince them of every little detail. Like, she knows I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. what and you're not going to spend the money frivolously because we don't have any fucking money. So it's fine. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> you know? What prompted so, the move from, from Cottage Grove Road to where you are now? It was our psychopathic landlord, man. This homie sauce looked like motherfucking Skeletor on crack. It yeah. was so bad. So like during the rent freeze on COVID, right? When everything was shut down, we were still open because I was like mad sanitizing everything. And I was like, no, we, we need to stay open. Mm -hmm. Anyway, motherfucker would come in and start screaming in my face for him to fucking, he wanted rent, even though there was a rent freeze. And I was like, get the fuck out of here, dude. You know, uh -huh. just totally just unhinged nutcase. And so I was like, oh, God, this guy's going to, like, attack me or something, you know? So I, like, you know, I had, like, pepper spray and shit there. I had, like, a taser, wow. you know? I'm, I'm going to take this bitch down if he tries something, Right. You know? So you really but did feel so, like he was going to try something. Well, because he was just nuts. He would just come in and scream at me. Like, huh. who on earth, who is a fucking grown-ass person, who is a landlord, who is, you know, ordered by the government not to collect rent, right. feels in the right to walk into a, a store run by a woman and literally get this far away from her and scream in her face, give huh. me money, open your register, give me money. So we were like, no, you know, fuck this noise. We're out. Also, that place was a shithole. He, we had no heat. There was black mold. Like that place is disgusting. Yeah. That guy, he's, a, he's not case, you know? Okay. Um, so we left, we were just like, okay, forget this. Right. And yeah. then she bought this place. Yeah. Which is 8,700 square feet. It has a residence for her on the property. We've got the store itself, which is two large rooms. We have a bunker underneath mm -hmm. that it, we're turning into a second art gallery. Across from that, there's another room that's going to be a meeting room and a like where we do art classes. There's a speakeasy in there. Um, everything is super historic. Out in the shed, um, I call it the hangar. If you can imagine two Cessnas like wing to wing mm -hmm. and then about two and a half stories tall, um, this is where we do our graffiti. So two thirds of that we've converted into like an event space. And I remodeled this 1978 vintage uh, Dodge Dreamer motorhome. Like into 77, 77, man. Are you sure? I yes, a 77. Hell yeah, super punk rock. Is the, uh, is the British bus still there? No, it's not. It's the suck, man. I know. Dude, I wanted it so bad, too. Like, the motherfucking, it was like a nuclear response vehicle from Britain. I was like, no, right. no, I need yeah. that. I need to pick my kids up from school in this bitch. I know. They wouldn't sell it to me. 
That's I was funny. Gypped. You fucking hear me? He tried to sell but it no, to I, me. I remodeled the, uh, <laughs> the motor home into a DJ booth. Yeah. And we finished the floor in there and we've got it like kind of a party slash event space. And um, then the other one third of the building is climate controlled. And that's going to be a studio space and a third art gallery. Okay. So it's all, it's all in prog- progress. You know, that's the nice thing about this place. There's so much potential to it. Oh yeah. It's, we just, we can't keep up with the labor as quickly as we'd like to. So, like, the whole thing is a fucking giant-ass, like, school compound. Right. I like to call it a compound. I'm not... So, here's the thing. I, kind of. You know, I'm not sure if I want to be a cult leader because I'm not sure if I want to be God or God speaks through me, you know, kind of thing. I feel like taxes would be easier, Val, if we just declared ourselves a religion. No. Right. No, we should do it. It'll be great. The, just, like, you, one you of those boxes the, I want to Count check. the acreage as a uh, sovereign nation. Bro, it is a sovereign nation. I have a fucking fence out front with spikes on it. Hell yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, so-, so basically the property is a, a schoolhouse from 1859. It was Pumpkin Hollow School built in 1859. Mm-hmm. At one point, they they ripped it down and redid it into a brick building. Um, and then just added on to it. Yeah. So like, in the 50s, they yeah. redid. They added the two classrooms and then the bunker and the shed and all the other stuff. So well, she shed, lives shed in is from the nineties, I think. Is it? Yeah, because that's that was. So she lives in the original schoolhouse, which yeah, is the upstairs was done in the nineties. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, we live over there, and then this this right here was it was from the seventies. So we it was the first grade and second grade classroom, which is the store, and then and then the bunker was in the sixties during the Cold War. Well, this addition here right. was built in the fifties. This one is the fifties. Oh fuck! Okay, I don't know. Time is an illusion. The only time now is party time. <laughs> she doesn't know paperwork. She doesn't right. do paperwork. She just remembers. No, fuck that. but yeah, we, we've got the ladies down at Burke Lutheran Church that have come down here and told us a lot about the history, and you know the cemetery down there. A lot of the students here. Um, went there so like marla yeah. goes and puts flowers on their grave i'm yeah. a creepy little motherfucker yeah. <laughs> i'm all sorts of we're, we're halloween here. all year round right yeah. Halloween. yeah the name is the name is what is the kicker and i think i mentioned to you guys in the email when i contacted you um i used to run that place as a recording studio i in in the mid 90s so i used to work at uh i was the booking agent at uh paramount music hall which was r&r station um, it's not there anymore. It's a bridge. And my drummer, he is, he was the sound man. And we worked for a company that was based in Sun Prairie called Naughty, Naughty Wood. I don't know, but he bought it from, there used to be a landlord that owned that place. And he was much like the landlord you were talking about. He was a slumlord. He used to, uh, he was trying to sell the place and he basically let us go in there for cheaper rent. If we would fix the place up. Uh, we used to live in the basement part. There's a little room that was kind of like a locker room. That's where the gymnasium was. And we used to live in there. There was no heat. So we had to have small rooms that were filled with propane heating tanks. And we were there in the winter. Um, we had all our recording equipment in there. We recorded a bunch of bands in that place. And then the landlord locked us out one day and all of our equipment was in there. And he was just like, you need to pay me more rent. And it's like, we paid you the rent that you said to pay. And he was like, no, and we literally had the guy arrested and filed a suit against him, but then we got kicked out. And then that's when uh, Kim's sewing came in and they took it over and built the second story and the the garage that's out there. And like, there was no second story and the separation, like when you walk in the hallway and there's the steps that go up, There was a divider wall in the room that you walked into and he tore part of that down and made it so that you could walk through to the other side. So it used to be four rooms all together. And you guys are offering uh, classes at the place there now too. So how was, was that something you did at the previous place where you were teaching art classes and stuff? Uh, so I, we used to do um, graffiti classes. Yes. And um, I did, I did used to teach it Um, and it's a lot of fun, but we're going to, we have reformatted how we're going to do things because previously it was just kind of more free for all kind of thing. Uh-huh. Now it's more structured where in which when somebody wants to take a class, um, I only do uh, either individual one-on-one or up to four people. Why is that? Group. That's it. Um, because you really need help because, um, you know, freaking give me this shit right here. Okay. So like, look, everyone who like starts off with the spray paint camp, everything you see in a movie, all the Bart Simpson, you know, be like, you paint like this, man. Okay, no, right. no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. So I got to start off with people, and I got to teach them 
you know, because there's differences between the spray paints. Some of it's high pressure, some of it's low pressure, some of it's matte, some of it's glossy. Uh -huh. And, you know, all these little things on top make a difference, you know, and then how to hold it, how to do it and all that other stuff. Yeah. Once you get a hang of that, it's called can control. Then you can do pretty much anything. Yeah. So what we do here is um, somebody's going to send us a, um, a uh, design. We're going to project it on the wall and trace it out for them first. Oh. I'm going to sit there with them nice. and then teach them how to paint it. Yep. And then you like get that. down the good skills. You make something really beautiful that's super, super awesome. You're super proud of it. And then you come back again next time and do it by yourself. Okay. You know? And you uh, no. I'll, and we also... will have other classes too. I'm I was just going to say, I saw a watercolor her. one too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to convince her to do classes in acrylics. I don't want to. And in sewing nope. eventually. Forget um, it. But we do have another teacher that she's not teaching yet. We're still in talks with her, um, but she lives right down the road and she's going to be teaching watercolors. Um, so we'll be carrying watercolor stuff eventually too. We're kind of trying to expand like, into all kinds of art supply. Okay. Yeah. And like, that's just the thing is I feel like, yeah, I could teach these classes, but I'm way better at something else. You know what I mean? I'd hate to like sit there and just be like, gah, gah, let's paint a tree. But like, you know, like I can't just like sit still and like teach a bunch of people how to sew. Like I sew, but I do like chaotic bullshit and like, mm -hmm. you know, just like make weird, crazy crap that works out for me. It's probably not going to work out for like, Bobby over here, you know, he's going to sew his finger to a piece of something and I'm just not going to, I don't know, but we want to, we want to like open that up to like other teachers. Yeah. Sorry, Val, probably not the best place to bring this up. So we are, she we are looking for, by saying in front of someone else. <laughs> we are looking for teachers. We're also looking for, for, um, more artists, consignment artists. Oh yeah. We take, um, consignment stuff. We don't charge, uh, if we sell something, we, we take 20% of what we we sell. Uh, most galleries will take like 60%. Yep, so, yep. you know, we've got a lot of room here for art. We're, um, we're alternative as heck because yeah. all downtown, like every, every art gallery, they're going to take 60%. They're going to, you know, it, you know, give you X number of months. They're going to charge you for wall space. Like that's not what we're doing here. We're here to support the artists. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you hang your stuff here, you know, we rotate it, you know, we take care of it. And if it sells, you get the 80%. We get the 20% and then, you know, come buy some spray paint, homie, you know, like, right. <laughs> how do you, yeah. And I mean, I'm not a museum curator, but you know, I've drawn up like a consignment agreement so that people know when they're going to get paid and you know, what kind of security we have, it gets them on our insurance. You know, it, it basically lets, reminds them, it, it tells them exactly when they're going to be paid and how, okay. and it, any artist that gives their work to somebody else should always have some sort of a proof of it. You know, it's, it's precious. Yeah. Also, also we're non-exclusive. So if you want to come yeah. and get your art and show it somewhere else and then bring it back, that's cool to us. Mm. Some other places will be like, no, you can't remove it. You can't do yeah. this. You can't do that. Like you lose all your rights to it, but we're not about that. We're like, I no, never thought I mean, about that. Yeah. I, yeah. I never we're considered that. Right? Like okay. our, our main thing is to support the artists and the community of artists and our local community too. Cause we have local people that have come in been like, yo, I've been painting for X amount of years. I've never shown my art before. And uh, you guys are the first people. And we're like, heck yeah, you know, just, it's all good, you know, because it's not just about graffiti or graffiti art or, you know, like whatever, um, you know, like pop art or whatever it is. It's like, we want all forms of art from all people and just like, you know, it's all good, man. Like, you know, just come in, hang out. We all freaks here, you know, right. like it's good. How do you reach out to the the artists in the community? Or how do you find people? Like how, how do you? Okay. Well, this is mostly my way? job. So okay. um, I am constantly on Facebook looking for artist groups, um, talking to people, people contact me on the website. Um, we're trying to do, you know, marketing. Um, we're just putting, we're putting out, Val pack commercial or uh, not commercials, um, Val pack coupons in December. Mm. Um, just pretty much any way we can. A lot of word of mouth. We had our grand opening on the 29th and 30th. And how did that everybody go? that comes in here is, oh, it was great. Oh, everyone's thrilled. Yeah. It's great. But you know, I'm an accountant, so there's never enough money. <laughs> <laughs> I was to make right. more. 
but that's the great thing about this place is you, it's really difficult to market because there's so much you walk in and we can't possibly show everything there is to show yeah. in a video or a one picture or, you know, even a card or a collage. Mm -hmm. So you have to come in and see it. And everybody that walks in through the door is like, Oh it. my God, this is amazing. And I know 10 people that would love this and they bring them back. It's a feast for your ADHD, my friend. It come, is. Come wet all, your tongue. All three of the operations people here have ADHD. Oh, so just, every oh, space is packed. You know, we've got tons so of lights. ideas. Yeah. We like shiny things. We like shiny things. They taste good sometimes. So I, and then how did you hear about the place opening up? I mean, I know it went for sale, but I feel like it wasn't really announced or anything. So how did it come? Uh, how, how did the place itself you did you find out about it that was a good sentence how did you guys find out about the place <laughs> that's, yeah that's more magic that that was kind of like uh this crazy set of events like my whole life is actually just like this insane roller coaster of events uh -huh. that just lead into each other without any breaks or stops like uh I fell in love with my soulmate because I almost got my hand amputated. Um, That's a so lyric to a song right there. <laughs> I, I feel like, you know, makes sense. So, um, you know, it was along the lines of that. If you want to hear that story, that's a story for another time in the future when we have more drinks than us and a lot more time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And also, how I realized I didn't get to this part yet. Um, so you said you did, uh, you know, you were collecting garbage and, and making galleries and all that stuff. But how did you get involved or get started in actually doing uh, spray paint art and street art and things like that? How did you how did you actually begin? It, oh, dude, I was surrounded by it growing up. Just it was everywhere. And like my favorite thing was making stencils, though, because you could go a lot faster with a stencil. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. fucking get your thing up and then go make a stencil. Go. And you could repeat it so many times. Mm -hmm. So that was my favorite thing because you would just throw that shit in a backpack. And I'm a hate to say it like this, but I'm a little white girl that doesn't look like that much of a bad person. So I could get away with a lot of stuff. Right. <laughs> you know? And I took advantage of that. Hell yes, I did. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as you go on and you go forward, like you just meet more people in the culture because they recognize you and they're like, you're that fucking bag of shit. And it's like, Haha, yes, so are you, <laughs> you know? So like, that's how it goes. It's like a natural evolution. You Were know, you influenced time. by some, like, what are some of the influences that you had while you're doing that? Or was it just like, there, I know there's always something where it's like, oh, I'm going to do that too. Or like, I like this person's style. I'm going to try and learn from that. And then of course you eventually grow into your own thing, but. No, well, like, you know, what happened with me is like, you know, I was surrounded by it at all times. I think I did like my first graffiti when I was like eight years old. And I what like got it? a fucking like giant ass marker and like on the school bus wrote my own damn name. Okay. You know, not not any nickname, but my own damn name on the back Smart. of the school bus thing, like over and over again. And they're like, <laughs> they're like who possibly could have done like, this? Oh, no, that wasn't me. And it's like, but it says Marla. It says Marla was here. And it's like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and it has your address and your phone number on it. Bathroom in our store. Yeah. yeah. That's just, how bad she is. I just like, it's, it's just everywhere. Just like, ba ba ba. It's a compulsion. Ba, ba, ba. It is. It's a compulsion. And like, and I've just done it forever. And it's like, you know, as, as time wears on, it's like, yeah, you know, there are lots of people and I've seen lots of people. I've seen tons of art. Like, uh, one of my favorite graffiti artists of all time is Claw Money. She is fucking amazing. Like, she is so great. Uh, you know, Lady K, like, um. All, all these like amazing women, you know, I love them so much. Uh, but it's just like, you know, you're just out here fucking just doing your own thing. Like the whole thing with graffiti is it's you're leaving your mark. You know, mm -hmm. it's you, you know, it's like, this is a chunk of me. Like I was here. Ha <laughs> ha. Fuck you. Yeah. You know? And like, every time you go past that and see, you know, your mark there, it's just kind of like, you know, it's, it's kind of like this weird ownership, you know, like you're, mm -hmm. you're like owning the world you live in by like proclaiming despite what, anyone says or 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 what it is you're proclaiming you're here you know what i mean so speaking of women mm -hmm. um she's very pro at like graffiti women in graffiti are you know really looked few down and on. far few and far between my friend yeah few it's, and far it's a man's world so you know she's very pro female and we she does this thing called sexy paint where she takes um exotic dancers and they retire their their cool um high heels Great. What's your oh, yeah, yeah, my oh, favorite one. Okay. Yeah. She re they retire their cool high heels, so we display our paint cans in them. Yes. So, like, I mean, like, and, and like, I know these girls oh, okay. are so amazing. 
They're like, these shoes made me so much money. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes, but this one has a gun. It's oh, like, nice. Yeah. I like that. And then I go That's on, awesome. And then like, so I have like, I have a whole crazy amount of amazing shoes. And then, yeah. and then I have this collection of vintage cameras too. So we have the shoes, the spray paint, and then the vintage cameras all put together. Okay. And it's the only cans display. Yeah, I saw so that. I was trying to figure out the. You guys said you have an only can page on your on your website, but is what is that? Where is that? Not yet. Okay. The idea, We're working on it. Yeah, the idea is it's going to be only fans, but that's um, what I thought. I was like, is that what they're playing a riff on? Yeah. Okay. Well, yep. you you'll basically be able to subscribe to this channel to see behind the scenes, like graffiti artists and things like that, because. Evidently, you cannot just come and watch graffiti artists because that's considered an outdoor event and you need a permit uh, and all yeah. kinds of things. Okay. But if you want to see it, you can, you know, subscribe to our channel. And like I said, we, we haven't gotten this up yet. We're really kind of looking for a videographer. Okay. Um, like I said, it's just it's just us. So any anything that we can't do with our talents we're, is kind of on the back burner right now. So gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I was confused by that. Cause I saw that you had written it in there, but I'm like, but where is it? And I even tried to do a search and I was like, I'm not finding it anywhere. <laughs> we're going to, so we're going to get it there soon. Okay. Soon. No, that's good. No, okay. Good to know. I, I'm glad, I'm glad that, uh, I was, I remembered to ask that because I was, I was uh, hoping that it wasn't just like, uh, I, some, I was hoping it wasn't something that where I was just like, am I that out of touch that I don't know what this is and I can't find it, but I get, you haven't done it yet. So, okay, good. It's not, it's yeah. not just yeah. me being an idiot. <laughs> yeah. You good. It's us. Okay. And, uh, so with the, uh, you have, uh, some studio spaces there, uh, that you're not, renting not out. Yet. Not yet. Okay. So Dude. what, what are the plans for the studio spaces? Um, well, the plan is it's going to be one third of our shed and we'll be able to rent that out. Which is a huge shed, by the way. It's enormous. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually that's call it the why, hangar. That's why I need a cult, man. I need <laughs> fucking minions to do this work for me, man. It's so the, the area oh, is oh God. climate controlled and the studio space will be available for rent once we create that area. Yeah. Um, so to jumpstart a business, we cleaned out a hoarder's house. So a lot of the vintage stuff that we have um, has come from there. So we cleaned right it now, good. We cleaned it good. Don't get freaked out. It's not all covered in cat shit. Okay. Yeah. Everything gets clean before it comes in the store. But we have a lot of really cool stuff. A lot of great inventory. It really helped our business. A lot of scary but shit too, that man. area is where everything is stored right yeah. now. So all of the other areas are going to be done before that. Studio yeah. space is probably not going to be done until after like next summer. It, at it, least. It, it's, it is a hell on earth yeah. i found a box of human cheese get out of here with that it was a terrible i've experience. been to a few yeah. horror houses oh, we got a lot of good inventory there's stuff behind me that's that's what I, I basically every weekend i go to estate sales and houses like that where and buy stuff and sell it online so yeah i'm, I'm familiar with hoarder houses they're fun but they're also it's just like Terrifying. there's there's no dog here or cat here but why is everything covered in cat piss <laughs> You know, yep. like, <laughs> like, oh, amen to that, my friend. Yeah. Or uh, you open up a box that's marked dishes and you find a whip that's also a dildo. Oh, that was, uh, <laughs> love that. Well, Touch that's just that with my fucking bare hands. But yeah. she says a, but we found at least three of those. Three. <laughs> you need a yep. backup. You know, like oh, man, if one breaks, what are you going to do? Yeah. Then you're stuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually have a list. It's called the no list. And I posted this on, on the Instagram. It is the shit that I don't want in the store. So, you know, like stuff like, hey, I don't want your dead fucking cat. I don't want, you know, your jars of piss, your human fucking tea. Yeah. So you so plan you plan on having that stuff stuff ready, you're saying, in within the next year is what the plan is. Yeah, probably around next summer. Because, okay. like, it's cold now. I don't want to go sit in there and dig through all that stuff you know yeah the idea is to basically um the the second art gallery downstairs is almost ready i just have to paint um we also have to figure out something for uh accessibility mm -hmm. um we oh, have yeah. stairwell that is way too narrow mm -hmm. um we can't put a lift on it so what we're thinking about doing i need to get a contractor out here to give us an estimate for like digging a trench down in front of the building oh. we've got like a big window well and maybe putting a door in but even if we decided to start that today, concrete would have to be poured. So it couldn't be done until next spring. Right. Um, so for now, we do have a space out in the shed that we can do art classes. Um, 
but it's, it's cold. Yeah, I need yeah. to I need to put heaters in there. But even if you and do I'm have trying heaters, to drywall, yeah, I'm trying to drywall, but I'm having trouble finding um, like a drywall contractor. I've been looking since September, hmm. and everybody's just has a shortage of labor. So as soon as we can get a drywall contractor, that'll be warm enough when we can do that for events. Um, just minor things. I need to finish the floor. Yeah, you know stuff like that. Yeah. So, I mean, like, like we're going to have all this stuff. Like, we're here for the next 30 years. And when I die, she's coming with me. Uh, we're going to haunt these halls together. So, right. um, <laughs> you know, so it's like, yeah, this is just the beginning. It's the first couple of months. And people are like, oh, where's the studio space? Where's this? Where's that? Homie, just sit down. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to yeah, be here for 30, 30, 40 years. And then my kids are going to take over. And then when we're dead, we're going to haunt their asses. It's gonna yeah. be great. Just be patient. I mean, it's people. basically me and her doing the stuff. Yeah. And she's got kids. She yeah. has to be a mom too. Yeah. So, and I'm disabled. So it's limited to, you know, time and my body's ability. Yeah. But just, we're working as fast as we can. And you've, we really you've barely been there a month. I'm not expecting more from you by now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you're doing perfectly fine to tell you the truth. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, you've done a lot there. What would you say now that you've been, because it has only been. Not two even months. a month, two months. Okay. I thought almost two months. Okay. Uh, so I, now we opened you... September 7th. Okay. For some reason I was thinking that it was in October, but yeah, you're right. It the was... grand, we did the grand opening in October 29th. Uh, that's why I'm making that. Um, okay. I got you. But I wanted to have a little bit of time to get flyers out so people would know who we were. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it's, and... it's all in the marketing plan, man. <laughs> okay. And then I just had two more things I wanted to ask you. One, what would you say is so far being there the most difficult thing about opening and running this place? Getting the word out. I mean, just basic, we're here, we're awesome, come in type yeah. of thing. That's a good message um, right there. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But once people stop in, they're hooked. You know, they love the place. Yeah. And we keep telling them like, look, we get a ton of vintage stuff in that shed. We rotate our stuff out all the time come back. We rotate our art, come back. Um, you know, we've got a lot of affordable art by a lot of really great artists, all kinds of different things, not just graffiti stuff. We've got yeah. one 73 year old little guy that does like things that look like Monet's. Nice. And he's just like amazing. There's all kinds of different artists here. So if you're looking for a good local art, like this is a place to be. Okay. And if and, people... you know, some of these people would never get into a normal art gallery because they've never tried. And also the normal art gallery would rip them off. So yeah. that's why we're all weird and alternative. <laughs> and if people yeah. wanted to find out more about uh, the place or if they wanted to contact you, where would the, where would you suggest that they go to do that? Pumpkinhollowart.com. We also have our Instagram pages on there. Um, there's a connect to our email. Our phone number is 608-405-5121. And there's also a link to that there. Um, there is another alternative website that um, one of our marketing companies put out called graffitiartmadison.com. Oh. And there's another phone number on there. So these are all ways to get a hold of us. Or you can come in and bring me Tapa Chico, okay? <laughs> Not the pineapple one, though, because I'm allergic and my tongue will swell up, okay? Do they have real no, pineapple in it? I, no, I don't think so. But psychosomatically, it happens anyway. Because gotcha. I was going to say, I couldn't see them actually it. like, you know, juicing a pineapple to put in there. It's got to be, uh, you know. No, it's, uh, it's definitely fake. But I'm like, uh oh, I'm going to die now. Gotcha. I'm the same way with bananas. So. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Allergic fruit gang. <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for uh, talking with me today. It was great meeting both of you. Yeah, yeah it was you too, awesome, Tom. man. Thank you.